Aiming to define the pre-event research or maybe what are the importance of pre-event research, doing the pre-event research. In that part, if you remember, you had written two paragraph. Yes, sir. Belonging to this question only. So write down the first importance. Now you have to write down point wise. First point, write down the first point. The sub point importance. Yes. So here we are writing down directly. So here we are writing down directly the importance of pre-event research under which we are going to write down approximately eight different points or eight different areas. Yes, write down the first importance. Yes, sir. That's all. That's all. That's all. First importance is to outline. First importance is to outline the event to outline the event project report to outline the event project report put a small dash and write down this is the first step this is the first step of the pre-event research this is the first step of the pre-event research and in this step and in this step a report is made and in this step, a report is made in regard to the event. A report is made in regard to the event which organizer in regard to the event which organizer want to conduct which organizer want to conduct put a full stop this report put a full stop write down this report include this report include the planning process this report include the planning process and the other areas related to the event and the other areas and the other areas related to the event in a brief way in a brief way so that in a brief b r i e f in a brief way so that a short presentation can be given so that a short presentation can be given to the organizer <coughs> write down the second <coughs> importance <coughs> audience profile write down the second importance audience profile <coughs> In this step, put a small dash. Second importance of the pre event research is audience profile. Put a small dash and write down here all the data, here all the data are collected. 
where all the data are collected so that the profile of so that the profile of the potential audience so that the profile of the potential audience can be <coughs> segregated s e g r e g r a t e d can be segregated based on their age based on their age and area of interest <coughs> write down the third point i will explain each point in detail okay. first we are just going to finish off the second part <coughs> write down the third point analyze and survey analyze and survey the targeted audience analyze and analyze and survey the targeted audience put a small dash again repeating third importance of doing pre event research is analyze and survey the targeted audience put a small dash this is very important this is very important step in the pre event research this is very important step in the pre event research as this is very important step in the pre event research as in this case as in this case in this case the event manager as in this case the event manager send this survey send the survey questions send the survey questions to the potential audiences to the potential audiences put a full stop write down this help this help the event planner to understand the current to understand the current demand and the choices to understand the current demand and the choices of the participants comma including audiences of the participants comma including audiences what a full stop it can directly it can directly be related to it can directly be related to finding out it can directly be related to finding out the theme of the event itself finding out the theme of the event itself yes just hold on the theme of the event itself just hold on try to understand these three points and try to understand like how these three points are interlinked with each other right so the first point as we have written is 
that to outline or to name the report of that event. So what is basically the outline? See, first the organizer will approach the event management company and the organizer will express his or her interest by saying, I want to spend so and so much amount of money and I am giving you a responsibility or maybe this particular task to organize such an event, so and so event. So as you know this particular step, in the next step, your event manager or the event planner is going to request the organizer not to directly jump onto conducting the event, rather than that he will convince the organizers to spend a little bit amount of their money so that before actually we begin starting the process of planning of the event, let's try to find it out whether is there any demand for such event in the market or not. So after making the organizer convinced, that particular event planner will take out small amount of an fund, maybe from that particular budget itself. Because for doing the survey and all that, obviously you will have to do the field work. And for doing the field work, obviously you will have to spend some money on it. So obviously after getting that particular thing convinced, the first step that you will do is, based on the requirement of the organizers, you will draw out a brief outline. Like, what would be the location of that particular event? Who else would be going to participate in this particular event? Who is going to be the chief guest of, the, of this particular event? When this particular event will be organized, whether it will be organized on so and so date, whether it will be organized in the morning time, afternoon time, or maybe in the evening time like that, whether the catering facility will be provided or not. So he is going to make a very rough brief report. It will not be considered as a detailed report. It is just a brief report only. And after making that brief report, the event planner is going to give presentation in front of the organizer. So that is the first step. Because until and unless no paperwork has been done, then that particular planning cannot be tactically implemented in a physical form. So the first step would be to do the paperwork. But here again I am repeating the paperwork is actually being done in a brief format. That's why here we have used a technical term by saying outline report. So it is not the detailed report. It is the outline report. Why it is the outline report? Because exactly after doing this survey, if the event planner will actually get the positive sign, the event planner is going to get the green signal, then only the actual report is going to be get conducted and that will come under the planning part of the event. So that is the later part. So here only the brief report is created by the event planner and it is not only by creating the brief report, even it is the responsibility of the event planner to do the presentation in front of the organizer. Here, so this is the first step. Now moving to the second step. Second step is related to the audience's profile. Audience profile means what? Obviously this you know very well. Generally in terms of an event management, generally we don't every time use this word audiences. Rather than that we use the term targeted customers. Targeted audiences. Every time we use this term targeted. Why we use this term targeted? Targeted means for every event all the peoples are generally not invited, right? We want only those peoples to be get invited for that event so that the, those peoples are going to make that event fruitful. Even in case of a social event also. Like in case of a social events, everybody want only the relatives of either the bride or the relatives of either the groom will come. In any kind of a wedding event also, not all the peoples are invited. If all the peoples will be invited, then that particular thing will become just a longer part. Right? So that is basically not supposed to be get done. Here also, the first thing that is supposed to be done is, to whom we have to target. So here, the second thing is, you will have to make the data on that particular area. 
like in this particular area if the company wants i want uh, only those people to attend my event whose annual income is to be considered as more than 5 lakh rupees so obviously a data is made in regard to that particular locality and all the people whose annual salary would be more than 5 lakh rupees so those particular people's data means their contact numbers means their email id and their addresses all the data is collected and compiled in one particular form because ultimately when we at last planning part of the event if we are going to send the invitation we are going to send the invitations to these individuals only reason being our targeted customers or the targeted audience are the people who are having the annual income which would be more than 5 lakh right? so this is the second important aspects of doing the pre event research now moving to the third aspects which is very critical which is very very important the third is related to analyze and survey the targeted audience so what does this particular thing means let me to make this idea clear in terms of giving you an example of let's take simple example you want to conduct a seminar right <laughs> yes you want to conduct a seminar i will go to the other side i got a chance yes please mute yourself who else is there kindly mute yourself mohammad hamawat kindly mute yourself please mute your mic fine so yes let's give you an example like you want to conduct a seminar and in that particular seminar you want only the teachers including the administrative peoples of the schools which are around the locality of the rohini should participate and should come to attend that seminar right and that particular seminar theme is related to the uh, learning the ways learning the new online ways of teaching the students maybe that that particular theme of that seminar would be just imagine right it would be somehow learning the new technology based of teaching something like that only so what happens in this cases in the second step you are going to find out which all the schools are there around this particular locality generally the area which is uh, you can say that 5 km distance far away while you are not targeting the schools which are too far away from your native place because you know very well even after sending the invitation to them they are not going to get a turn up they are not going to attend your seminar kind of thing so definitely your target audiences would be not the general people it would be the school only and if we talk about the school also there also will have to filter out school doesn't means all the security people will come all the pun will come all the you can say that the administrative staff will come only the higher level authority staff will come that to related to the admin part along with that you are going to invite the teachers also and it is related to the teaching methodology just uh, talk about this right so that would be the topic of the seminar so you have taken the data you have collected the data you have collected the name of the school also you have collected the individuals faculty name also you have collected the contact number also you have collected their email ids also including you have collected their and their home address or maybe the school address also so that the proper communications can be made with them once you are going to invite them right so this is the second step now moving to the third step third step is this here yeah. pardon i am saying so where you want to go yes please no lecture no problem fine so what actually happens in the next step that why why i said third step is very important so you before actually you are conducting that seminar you are going to take the feedback from all the participants how come you are going to take the feedback you are going to send them the feedback form you are going to send them the survey form where you will write down we are our topic for this particular event or the seminar is teaching online methodology something like that 
how many of you are agree with it or how many of you are going to participate into it just rate it from 1 to 5 if most of the people will, will not give it the rating of the 5 automatically it will give a green signal to the event planner like this particular topic is not been liked by most of the teachers and they will also write down in the second question if you are not agree to attend then on which particular topic you are comfortable likewise there would be one more question on that particular things like we are inviting so and so as a chief guest are you agree with it if you are not agree with it kindly suggest some other names so likewise what you are doing in this case in this case rather than organizing or planning the event according to your organizer you are directly taking the feedback from their from your participants because once you will get the feedback from your participants then automatically the footfalls for your event there is a possibility like the footfalls for your event is going to be get a increase why the footfall is going to be get increase because now all the participants are very much comfortable as far as the selection of that particular topic for the seminar is there why right? because that particular topic has already been refined it has already been suggested by the participants also. clear sir wo plan to put the result of the session yes i will give you the details okay sir <coughs> ऑफिस में बात करने पर कलर से बुला लेगा तो पता लग जाएगा घर से बुला ले किसी को और जा रहा है मास्क लगाने यार ऐसा बिना बुलाया बस कंफर्म पड़े बोलो so that's why this particular part is very very important so in writing in writing the answer also this third point you have to explain in detail right because this third point is directly related to the participants and getting the direct views from the participants right so sometimes that's why in the last sentence i have made you write down in the last sentence we have written sometimes even the theme of the event will get changed the theme of the event by the theme of the event will get changed because it will get changed according to the preference of the participants if the participants are not comfortable in that particular one theme then obviously you will have to change the theme according to the participants only the same thing if you talk about like if any fest your college wants to conduct in the college itself so who are the potential like Uh, you can say that the participants or the audience in that it is the students only. So before actually the management is going to decide like to which particular X Y Z celebrity we are going to, is maybe going to come in this particular college. It would be better to leave that matter to the students itself to decide. So there at least the management is supposed to give four options to the students like as. we are having these four people these four celebrities in the contact so now you choose like to which particular celebrity you wants to have in your function and wherever you will get majority number of you can say that the say obviously that particular celebrity has to be get a so that is again why this thing is supposed to be done because somehow it increases the success rate of the event and success rate of the event means what you will have to increase the footfalls increase the footfall of what increase the footfall of only targeted audiences not to all here so who else would be ready to come forward and explain just third point under the importance of the event only third point not the first point not the second point because according to me in the survey part in this particular pre event research part third point is very critical third point is very critical i need to say it is very vital very very important so who else is going to take where is our lion he is is not he has not come to yes he is there only would you like to yes anybody else why you all 
people are looking down as if you all people are feeling ashamed of it, not coming at the event. There is nothing for which you have to feel ashamed, right? The only thing is to give you the platform to develop your confidence. That's a very good thing, yes. I I know like maybe it has been shared by the Minakshi ma'am also with all of you. Like <coughs> recently, maybe after you can say that after uh, 30 to 45 days, one more chef is going to join us. That particular chef uh, is obviously he is item pass out. Along with that, uh, he has an approximately around more than eight years of him working in kitchen and that too in Obra. So somehow you are going to directly and he is also very young. Uh, his age would, would be around 30 years only. Pardon? Name, name I don't remember. I think Mandeep kind of a thing is there. He is going to join your college as your production faculty and he is having more than eight years of an experience. Right? And then so from the over after 45 days. The pastor will also be there because generally in the food production, generally we used to keep two faculties. Earlier, I think Nitin sir was there, and after that, Devang uh, sir was there. So once the Devang sir has quit, after that, no new faculty has been hired. So this time, after going through all the faculties, like that particular faculty got shortlisted. And there is again one percent of a chance that he is going to join. No, 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 no. It never ever happens like that because once he is going to be get joined, after you can see that one and a half month, obviously the new semester, second semester of your first uh, year will start. So maybe he would be going to take the practicals in the theory class of that particular semester only. And once he will go to next semester, obviously then he is going to take that initiative. So in between the faculty is not supposed to be getting changed. Right? And let's see, we all welcome him and we all like expect he is supposed to join. But I think today or maybe tomorrow he is going to put forward his resignations in front of the Obroy panel and the Obroy peoples are very very you can say that very very convincing like they don't let any of the experienced staff to leave their organizations they are very particular about it so that's why there's 45 that's why there's 45 days periods are there maybe depending upon hotel to hotel likewise I think might be in Oka also, they would be having a kind of provisions like if you are leaving our organization within short notice periods, then you will have to pay or pay back the salary of 45 days. Or otherwise, you will have to take the notice period of 45 days. It would be something like that. So that's why, even after keep on insisting from the earlier man. He was very rigid. He said that before 45 days, as uh, he was saying, like as he has, he had already spent more than eight years in the same single property only, and uh, that particular chef is at the level of CDP, chef the party, and his area, maybe the kitchen part is Indian only. Indian means curry and tandoor. So obviously that particular person is not interested to join or to jump to the new property without giving any notice. Yes? Yes, he wants to leave that hotel that he wants to come Yes? So maybe he would be the right person to answer these questions. How can I get from his behalf? Generally, see, when you when you will get the you can say that the offer letter or the joining letter from any of the good renowned property, in that joining letter it is generally been mentioned your uh, age of the retirement would be somewhere around 55 years but still it varies from department to department for kitchen that age would be more than 60 also 
because by the time you reach to the age of 60 years you obviously will not remain in the operational level you become the corporate chef as a master chef right so, so if you talk about the like if you talk about the kitchen department there you can uh, keep on working or keep on remaining in the industry for a very long period of time right but if you talk about the journal if you talk about housekeeping department front office department there the age span is somewhere around 55 so till 55 years you can work in a single property yes there is no harm remaining in a single property only and that to the reason once you get into some good property right if you are the part of tata taj if you are the part of idc if you are the part of you can say that obro maybe there you can extend your tenure let's see whether that property is ready to pardon see i started my career with holiday in pune after that my father got retired and he came to delhi after that i came to delhi and i joined the rupee tuesday it was a kind of a chain of hotel restaurant there i was the part of the business development team as a chef manager so they keep on transferring the individuals from one state to another states because in every state they wanted to expand and open their new outlet so job was very challenging but it was interesting too but later on after getting you can say that after starting my married life then i want to get some settled in one particular place so i again came back to delhi i was in chandigarh so again i came back to delhi and joined india architect center isc there i continuously worked for more than 3 to 3 and a half years there also it was just like in government job only right because and uh, there i worked for 3 and a half years after that i moved on to the education line that was a very small institute in nearby to your that place is pitampura only that is not pitampura basically uh, nearby to pitampura there is one more thing that is no i am talking about that uh, ring road mall where the ring road mall is there in front of ring road mall this society is there If you will cross the road in front of Ring Road Mall, there is Saraswati Vihar, I think. Saraswati Vihar. So there, I think Saraswati Vihar is. So in that Saraswati Vihar, there is a very small college. By the name, in the Saraswati Vihar, there is a very small college by the name of L P I H. Who is that? L B I A H M Lakshya Bharti Institute of Hotel Management. So there, that particular college is very small college, and earlier that particular college used to give the degree and diploma with that of P T U Punjab Technical University. That college earlier, I don't know what is like the rating right now. That college was very famous for providing or giving the J M visa for the hotel management students. So you can say that if if their batch they used to have 80 students, out of the 80 students every year around 10 to 12 students used to go to the America for doing one year of their internship program. And during that one year of an internship program, every month they used to get around one lakh twenty thousand rupees. And they used to get they used to get you can say that the accommodations and the fooding, which was the part, it was free of cost. so and the event i first took there uh, like industry training interview i got very surprised right when i asked to them about the different like the outlets where they have actually worked they told me they have not got any opportunity to work in any of the department so i was very surprised like how come they were paying you 1 lakh 20000 rupees per month so all together while doing one year of in training they used to get approximately they used to save approximately around 10 to 12 lakh rupees sir while doing their hotel management itself but there is for everything there is some plus point for everything there is some minus point so what is the plus and minus point the plus and minus point is 
they used to have that particular institute used to have i don't know what is the present scenario right now they used to have the direct contact with one consultancy in mumbai the name of that consultancy was vira international it is very reputed consultant in the mumbai so they used to they used to send the students to that vira international and every year it used to happen like obviously everybody want to go to the america for doing the one year of a training program although their training period was 6 months only everybody want to earn while doing their hotel management everybody want to save approximately 10 to 12 lakh rupees so everybody used to apply for it and what was the application charge application charge including all the expenses like before actually your visa will be get cleared before that i am talking about before your visa will be get cleared after once your visa will be get cleared somehow you have to spend 1 lakh 50000 rupees as a consultancy fee but before actually you get the visa you have to spend at that time maybe and uh, this particular thing is uh, the way back 8 years back i am talking about at that time the student used to spend approximately 60000 rupees so it was a kind of a gambling for 60000 so although out of 80 students 10 student used to go to the abroad but what about the rest of the 70 students and what about the rest of the 60000 they actually spent because most of the visas get rejected in that embassy interviews because once you are standing in front of that particular foreigners by going to the embassies so ultimately they are going to give you the visa so most of the uh, students are do, do, are not being able to understand what that particular uh, that on the other hand of that particular glass panel but that particular foreigner is interacting to them those who are having the good communication skill they can easily be able to clear that visa route. but still just imagine it was just 10% success ratio so those who get selected it was a kind of an they were very lucky they used to be very lucky but those students who somehow due to their uh, factor only somehow they have they have not been going to be get selected they used to say wrong thing about the institute they used to even keep on asking about the refund of that 60000 in spite of telling them initially that 60000 is a kind of a gambling that they have been doing based on your own competency and that was a kind of a thing so after that i joined the gems college and i think from the last 8 years i have been associated with gems college means working with gems college so there are so many students who have come in front of me they have got passed there are so many students from your earlier batch your senior batch they have now got settled in most of the abroad areas or maybe there are uh, students who have started their own businesses i was very surprised to know recently i think two to three days back one student came to us and he had joined the hotel at the level of you can say that jp at the level of job training he wanted to get into the kitchen but initially in the kitchen uh, jobs were not available right because see getting the job in service by getting the job in service is very easy including front office also including housekeeping also because in service there is nothing too much to learn and anybody can give you the guidance so from which side you have to do the service from which side you have to do that kind of thing but if you talk about the kitchen till the time you are not actually perfect in the cooking process you are generally to be considered as burden on the kitchen itself and obviously everybody wants to hire the experienced person only giving you a very simple example you have joined as a fresher in the kitchen department basically in the indian section so obviously you will stand next to the tandoor but how will you handle the tandoor you don't know how to play with the knot you don't know how to like make chapatis and all that by using your hands only 
so maybe till the time you are you, have, you are not going to be get perfect because if the perfection will come then only that um, the, that particular naan or that particular chapati that whatever you are been making will directly go on to the plate of the guest so till the time you are not learning till the till the time you are not going to be get perfect you are just burden only so due to that reasons nowadays the trend is going to be get change directly the industry are not offering you the job they are keeping you on the probation by offering you as a job training so he had also joined job training and he had started his career from the the seven seas property there due although his job training period was 6 months but his performance based during 3 months itself he got the job directly as a comic from there after working over there for 2 years he got promoted to the level of comi first by skipping the comi second part and after that the last assignment i think he was working with some budget segment hotel as in cdp chef department due to the covid kind of and thing somehow i think he has quit his job or maybe that particular hotel got shut down so that particular gentleman along with one more chef the other chef is also having the experience of the abroad and he is also i can pass out both so both of them have started their take away restaurant nearby to i think gopal ji nearby to the gopal ji they both have opened a kind of a fast food restaurant gopal ji that you are chole bhature wala gopal ji chole bhature wala near to that only they have opened one you can say that take away restaurant and their kebab and all those things are very very famous so and they also give 20% discount and if you will say to them like you also belong to the hotel management from the james college also obviously they will give you the first one maybe they will give you maybe they will offer you something yeah you must at least go there yes you must yes the dress will agree see that is see that is your choice or yes 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 Pardon? Okay, so it's not a sound like. Generally, generally we give 30% discount. 20%? Yes. Then the bill is for us. Pardon? The rate. See, he is having all the four items. He is having biryani also. He is having momos also. He is having Chinese also. He is having tandoor also. He is having everything. Right? And even. even yes even the menu card is in there with vikas sir you can get the idea from there at least see why yes why why i have been asking you to at least visit that particular place once not not to go there to have something that is not the intention the intention should not be you should go there to have something not do like that at least interact with that particular gentleman maybe in your lifetime after doing your internship maybe if you are having a strong financial background so what is the point of doing the job rather than that you start your own outlet so maybe that gentleman will at least give you some ideas like he is having association with swiggy also he is having association with zomato also he is he has he has taken the license also so at least he will give you some idea like which all the licenses do you actually apply for right because until and unless gst number is not there with you you cannot have directly contact with that of us we get to know there is one more license which is required that is called fasa f s s a i so that is related to the food that also you will have to take so at least it will give you some idea because yes yes because yes please because because yes because apart from running his own restaurants he also take the responsibility of opening the new restaurants 
We also take the responsibility of opening new restaurants, new restaurants of some other people. So recently, he has opened two restaurants, maybe one in Ghaziabad, another one is Farida. So they do all the setup, including hiring the people, buying the equipment for your restaurant, setting the menu, and doing the cost part and everything. Right. So at least that information you can directly take it from them. And from I think last four months they have only they have started this venture. Enough time is there. Still six minutes are there. I will give you it is no problem. Sir, by the reason, sir, I am not asking you to write down anything else. So, no problem. I will start taking the attendance now only. Don't worry.